There we go. Hello? Okay, cool. <laughs> I couldn't hear me in my headphones, which, understandably, because my headphones are off one ear, but still. Um, stream manager. There we go. No? Hang on. <laughs> what is happening? We're gonna do um, some Neverwinter Nights while we kind of warm up the stream before I dive in to like making stuff and all that fun things. All that fun things? Yes. Um, hang on, so stream manager. Oh, wow. Hey, God King R. I was waiting for the my chat isn't refreshing. So I have, I have like the whole chat from Wednesday and also today. Anyways, we're going to do, I don't know, like maybe 30 minutes or so of Neverwinter Nights. Just for fun. Is this the last one? Yeah, okay, no, I forgot. It always goes to the top. Of course it's the last one. <coughs> oh, here we go. It took me a second. I was like, oh, that wasn't the last message. That I was trying to refresh it, and it wouldn't refresh. I'm just enjoying the kind of setup that we have here. <laughs> I'm so tiny in the center. We just have like the dire wolf lassie. Even the boar is kind of way bigger than me. And we have like our Dalen over here. She's just so tiny and just smack straight in the middle. Um, so we're in we're in the thick of of this nightmare realm. This nightmare place. Let me know if the volume is either too high or too low. Either or. Alright, let's see. Let me go this way. Oh, oh, hang on. Oh, somebody. Guys. Guys. Thank you. Jesus, Dalen was like, not having it. No, 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 no. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. <laughs> No one will see me. <laughs> I know, really. With uh, with like all these massive people behind me, and then like her massive antlers, she's overcompensating for her height. We're just gonna, you know, thieve right here. No, not that one. Game is a little quiet. Okay, hopefully it doesn't crash. Oh, I think it's gonna crash. It crashed. Okay. We're going to have to do that fight again. I should have saved. I should have saved. I don't know why I didn't save. That was dumb. <laughs> Alright, it crashed. Well, well, that fight went easy. I think this should up the sound a bit. It's always like a 50-50 if it's going to like me alt-tabbing out. <laughs> Alright, well... So we're going to go this way and then promptly be like, no, JK. Why are you walking up to him? You have a bow. You don't need to walk up to him, child. Oh, Jesus. That's fine. Oh, we're doing great in here. I was all worried. Excellent. I do love her, though. Like, she's pretty amazing. If we do go through, like, the whole... All of the campaigns for Neverwinter, which is doubtful, but, you know, I can dream. Um, if we do... <gasps> Who noticed that? Did I notice that? Oh, jeez. I didn't touch it! I absolutely did not touch that. Ah. Oh. Twitch is changing things? Oh boy, what are they changing? I'm out of the loop on everything, man. I don't have social media anymore. <laughs> what is Twitch changing? How come you don't trigger the trap? Hang on. Can I... Animal empathy? No? I don't think it worked. Oh 
my god, how did you... He's right in front of her. How did I miss? Alright, we're not looking fabulous. We're gonna feed Lassie, because she's not feeling hot. So, Lassie's okay. Our dire boar isn't, but... Oh, shoot. Okay, hang on. Where's... Cool, now the dire boar really isn't doing good. And of course I can't rest. Why would I be able to rest? That would just be far too simple. No, 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 stop. Thank you. Alright, we're gonna delve backwards a little bit, because I think I can rest over here. Nope. No, I can't. I forgot, resting in this section is super annoying. You know, I'm gonna take a sip of my coffee. It's from this morning, but my mug is is insane at keeping things cool, and also it's extremely watered down. Like when I say it's watered down, I mean like I pour, I make the coffee out of a Keurig, so already the caffeine content is a little lower than than actual coffee. But then I also oh I'm gonna sneeze. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. Okay, no, I'm fine. Um, I pour the hot coffee over ice, which melts instantly. I see people, they're always like, oh, to make hot, you know, to make iced coffee, you just brew your coffee and then pour it on top of ice, and voila, you have iced coffee. Do I just make ice wrong? Like, do I use the wrong kind of ice or something? Because if I pour fresh coffee over ice, that ice is gone. Like, I, I've never had my hot coffee poured over ice, and the ice just magically continue existing like I've never had that um so yeah I pour my hot coffee over ice that melts fine cools down the coffee throw more ice in and that lasts throughout the day and then I pour my creamer and I have I use a lot of creamer because I do it will take a bigger percentage of subs but they're gonna be more lenient with using other platforms okay I think I think I could that's tricky. <laughs> I get where they're coming from because the entire point is like, you know, obviously the... They want you to be... <gasps> Success! Oh wait, no, no, no! Why would you do this? <gasps> Dalen! I was successful. I'm upset. Dalen killed it after I made friends with it. <laughs> I'm mad. I shall do as you ask. Oh boy. Alright, well, have at. Coffee thinks that's complicated. Yeah, I mean it takes it's it it all takes the course of like five seconds to do. It's not terribly time consuming, honestly. But um yeah, it's just just a lot of ice to try to make iced coffee because I hate I hate hot liquid, hot drinks, any of that. I hate it. Um, hot hot drinks like hot coffee, hot cocoa, any of that. It makes me thirsty, which frankly is the opposite of what a drink is supposed to do. But alas, that is my life. Can I like attempt to unlock this? Okay. Well, this will break. Might as well have them work on this one because it's also going to be locked. These will also be locked, but I don't know if they're going to be able to break through these. Oh no, never mind. That one was not locked, neither was this one. Just don't drink coffee. <laughs> Are you kidding? I love coffee. Just cold coffee. They'll get through it. Oh, he's already passing out. Some nights it takes him a while, m my son, and sometimes it takes him like two yeah. seconds and he's out. I read through chapter two of the um, the coding book for Neverwinter Nights. Chapter two is kind of like a game plan type chapter. It's all about um, laying yeah. out 
I guess like the design document type of thing. So we could for fun kind of start on a design document for the Cinderella module. I have discovered that without extensions, I it's not possible, I think, in base Neverwinter toolset to force the player to play as a character. So we're gonna, I'm going to have to tweak the module idea to be more of a D&D type setting, which is fine. It's, it's all part of the creativity, so I'm not upset. Um, so we're going to have to tweak it a little bit to be more friendly towards player customization. What is with this door? Are y'all, like, incapable? Can I, uh, can I break it? I shall do as you ask. <sighs> it is Thank done. you. Off oh, butts. Just kidding. Guys. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Okay, hang on. We need to. No, 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 no. I need. Oh, boy. Alright, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, 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 no. Aw, oh, jeez. I'm so... Okay, hang on. Oh, no. And then. Okay, so I did Magic Fang. Guys, there's like a mage in here. Can we attack said mage? Oh god, okay, 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 okay. Go faster! Okay. Wow, that didn't do anything, did it? Um, no, okay, don't do that. Don't do that, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. Oh, yes. Okay, he's got bark skin going. Okay, what do I got? What do I got? What do I got? What do I got? Okay. Okay, Dalen's looking fine. I'm going to cast this on me. Holy cannoli. Aw, oh, man. Oh boy, that was, oops, my phone locked. The whole Twitch thing was the end of a conversation here between two streamers. Oh, okay. <sighs> Alright, well that was really annoying, and that means we have to go through all this all over again. See? I didn't touch that. They did. <laughs> Well, that's frustrating. Okay, we're just gonna do, we just save every time we enter a new room. Mages are risky, man. They might be squishy, but they ain't that squishy. No, 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 don't do that. Um, just attack someone. Oh no! I need to be a little better about like casting spells and stuff. Come on, come on, come on! Oh my god, you all suck! Could you all like thank you? No one was helping my my dire wolf. Dalen was just freaking standing there. Dude, what did I hire you for? Don't let my dog die. Whew. Okay. Alright, let's see. Um, actually, I think our health is okay now that I've fed Lassie. Maybe time to save scum? I think so. I think we're going to have to save scum. Man, this place, like, seriously, I love this level because it's so neat. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> but there's just something really cool about it. Um, I accidentally saved in an autosave slot. and Now that's an option. Oh, there's a switch right there. I hate you people. Oh, now Dalen has no health. All right, cool, 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 cool. We're going to go back. <laughs> because some of you can't <laughs> avoid traps that are right there. I know I know. none of us have 
like get rid of Trap. I know we're not Tommy. Oh, for the heck. It won't let me rest because enemies are too close by. Right, we're going to do this. And then I'm going to actually prep by putting Barkskin on me. Maybe on him as well. I know Barkskin goes away eventually when I cast it. I think we might... Okay, first of all, because it would be real dumb to walk in there without this. Flare, Flame Lash, Grease, Magic Fang. Okay, well, first of all, I'm going to cast this on me. All right, here we go. And at least we will have that. And we're going to head back this way. Mm, he's awake. <laughs> And then we're going to come this way this time, because I don't know, it's different. And now, if I go through this area, if I, oh my god, child. All right, go. Woman, oh my god. Why? Why? I'm, I have you right next to the lever. Would you... Would, oh, I'm going to get mad. Okay, hang on. This happens every so often where the pathing is just... Can you do something with it? Use it. Uh... Okay, all right. Uh... I guess I'll just... I like the game being like there, there's a there's a switch right there and I'm like yeah be lovely if I could use it sometimes the pathing in Neverwinter Nights it's not great like she's just standing there she's not even trying to path to it it's because she's technically in position for it but she just won't because she needs to get to it and I think part of the problem is Dalen okay well it's fine can I? Thank you. I think he was too close to the. It's something like that. I think the. I think part of the problem is also Dalen. Um, he was standing in front of the lever, and so she was trying to root to it and wouldn't. Uh oh, where am I? This seems bad. Hang on. <laughs> No, I think this is fine. Oh, dang it. I think my phone has low brightness, which is why I don't notice it getting dark. Oh, a bag. Eh. Alright, thank you. Okay, so... We, I think we technically avoided that mage by coming this way. And I'm tempted to keep it that way, honestly. Um, where am I? I wanted to do something. There might be something that we need in that direction. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. I was thinking of not using the bow and just having her fight melee because she does she, she's not making use of her full reper, her full repertoire of abilities unfortunately so it makes me feel like oh oh my god this stupid shield lights up things I mean it's not a stupid shield it's a great shield that's awesome wait there's uh yeah okay well that's fine we're just gonna, you know what, we're just gonna, yeah. I think that's what we'll do. Because honestly, I think she's not making... I love the bow, and I feel like it's a great support weapon. I don't know that she's really, like, designed for support. I want to figure out how to make her a shifter. Where am I? Ha! Who notices that? Uh oh. This is my territory now and I'm not going down without a fight. Well, tough. Oh, 
Oh, he's going down. About time, Lassie. Jeez. Alright. I wonder if I should have power attack mode active. Ooh, a spear. That, I believe, 100% is trapped. If I remember, that's a trapped chest if ever, mm, if ever there was one. No! All right. What does this do? Does it do anything? Light? <gasps> wow, that's worse than what I have equipped. <laughs> Because this is a white light, and it's useful. The green light is kind of terrible, honestly. But you know what? It'll be useful if anything happens to the shield. Where am I? I'm I missing. In the, task. the door is presently barred from the other side, but shows signs of recent use. Perhaps it will open up later. Okay, so I don't know if there's anything worth going back for down there. We could save... Well, no, no. You know what? If we go down there, we're just gonna... <laughs> we're gonna rest first. I don't really need to, but... It can hurt. Excuse me. Okay. First things first. Summon that. Second things second, cast that. Excellent. Thanking you. And now we move. There's a door here that we did not check out. It has a guard dog in it. Did I hit it? I don't think so. I think it hit me. Well, that wasn't useful. I don't think they drop anything either. Alright. So we're gonna just pop down here and just see if there's any reason to go down into those areas. Also, having your main character as a support character might make the game harder since you're... Yeah, part that, and also I can't... Like, if it was like Dragon Age, right, and I could switch which character I was controlling, it'd be different, because then I could lead with Dalen, and my character would be... Oh, wait, I forgot. <laughs> I was going to have her try and attack with a bow, but of course that's not an option. <laughs> um, see, I think she's got the... Oh, oh, I leveled up. Oh, oh, wait, no, no, hang on. Let the music stop. It's really annoying to level up when you have that music going. <laughs> Thank you, and level up. Okay. So again, Shifter. It's a prestige class. Requirements. I need alertness and wild shape. What is spell casting? Huh. Well, we don't have alertness yet. But these are these are skills. Persuade. I do like persuade. Healing is super important. Concentration. No, that's really important. And animal empathy. This, this is, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Animal empathy isn't really working out <laughs> for me. Um, crafting stuff is really cool. Disable trap. It'd be really neat for me to be able to disable a trap. Especially since someone in my party... Hey, Lord Magma, what's up? Someone in my party is able to <laughs> sense traps. So, if I could disable them... Oh. <sighs> 
I don't know. Intimidate, listen, lore. That's kind of useful because then I wouldn't have to spend a hundred gold to figure out if something's useful. Persuade, pickpocket, ride, search. Excuse me. Spellcraft. But that's not what it is, right? It's like spellcaster or spellcasting. See, this isn't useful for me. The higher the character skill, the better the price received when selling or purchasing goods. Well, that actually would be quite useful. Maybe we'll just stick to animal empathy. Oh, yeah. Some of the, these ones that aren't class skills, I forgot. They cost, they cost a bit. We'll stick with Lassie, the dire wolf. Okay. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. What did that say? What did that say? Did I get wild shape? Did I get wild shape? You better... Did I get wild shape? I have new spells. <gasps> this is very exciting. This is very exciting. We have a third level. <gasps> oh, I'm very excited. Um, okay. Call lightning? Shut the front door. Oh, we need this one. This is cure moderate wounds. Dominate animal. Infestation of maggots? With but a touch, you infest a target with maggot-like creatures. They deal 1d4... I love it. <laughs> Quill fire? Oh, I have some... <gasps> Summon creature 3. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, hang on. So we now have this. Cure moderate wounds. So I think... What we need to do is move some things. We're going to move this on top of light. And then we're going to move my new Cure Moderate Wounds there. So I now have three healing abilities. Which is fine. And then we're going to take Summon Creature 3 and pop that down there. And then we're going to take light, excuse me, light and pop that down there. Also, I need to get rid of my Summon Creature 2 because there is no point to it. A blood frenzy. What does that do? The caster enters a rage similar to that of a barbarian. The caster gains plus two bonus to strength and constitution and a plus one bonus to will saves. Hmm. Charm, person, or animal. We have flame lash. Lesser restoration. Could actually be very handy. Um, I feel like bull's strength. Which was? What does this one do? The target creature's strength is increased by 1d plus 4. That's kind of nice. Right? Oh, wait, hang on. I need to do that. And then I can do the bull strength. And then we can just, I don't know, pop that there. I'm running out of spots. I'm never really going to use stealth mode, if I am completely honest, but... Oh my gosh. Level 3 spells. There are so many good ones. There are so... What is this? Healing Sting. You inflict 1d6 points of damage. Plus 1 per caster level. To the living creature touched. And gain an equal amount... Shut the front door. Oh. Oh. Never mind. That's an attack move. Oh, I like it. Okay, instead of Cure Moderate Wounds, we're going to have Healing Sting, because that's insane. Oops, my chat disappeared. I forgot to check it. Making good progress on reading books on my shelves I've never read. Nice. Very good. Neutralize Poison. That's actually very useful. There are some great spells in here. Like, I'm excited. Um, Real quick, before we move on, we need to go rest healing sting right that sounds amazing i swear like the only reason i'm not like overpowering just everything is probably because i suck but this class is awesome there are no enemies nearby shut up let me oh god all right this is gonna annoy me so much <laughs> oh there was a shortcut was there no 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 there wasn't i'm just being silly i right, we're gonna go this way I think this is going to be more likely to allow me to rest. Oh, for heaven's sake. 
here. Thank you. We get to see what our new summon, our summon creature is. We'll go for a few more minutes. Maybe I'll try to complete the... We're almost done with this, so maybe I'll just try to go all the way through. And then we'll start working on the mod. I'm OP. I'm ridic- Oh, wait, no. <laughs> wait a minute. Oh my god. I have a wo I have a dire wolf pack. I'm done. Nothing is going to be able to defeat me. Oh, I love it so much. All right, we're going to give me bark skin. We are Hang on, I just got a text message. Um Well, I'll respond in a minute. I think it's fine. Okay. So, did I check these out? I don't think I did. I don't actually think I came into this room. Okay. Alright, so when we first came through here... This door took forever to open, but I suppose we can keep trying anyway. Whoops. Right, so bull strength is right here. I think I think we'll be okay. I think we'll get through this. It is done. Oh, whoops. So this is the room with all the treasure chests. Technically speaking, I think I can actually help now, because I am... I also have a weapon. <laughs> Obviously. Alright. Yeah, see, that went by a lot faster. Now that I'm not using a bow. Alright. We are going to save again for the millionth time. This is the door that caused us problems. Bash. My weapon nope. Is okay. My, my weapon is useless. You guys get it. I think my summon dire wolf is stuck. Bro, you're, you're not helpful here. There you go. There you go. It is done. Okay. Are you guys ready? <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. I'm never oh no, this is this is not a good <laughs> This isn't good. <laughs> They're trying to... Oh, they went around. Wow. I just... Uh, Alright. Uh, no. Uh, I'm coming. Oh, shoot. Alright, hang on. Come on, guys. Hang on. Let's do our new our new healing sting spell. <laughs> Let's do magic fang real quick. Did Lassie die? Oh hell yeah. Oh we did it this time. Hell yeah. Oh I'm so proud of us. We did it guys. We won that time. There we go. Well done, everyone. Beautiful. That time, flawless. Okay? Should have gone around. Even leveled up from it. Can I? No, of course not. Alright, everybody. Pile in. Oh, wait. Hang on. Go. Nope. Oh, my God. 
you're you can't no, stop it stop it this is my spot go around <sighs> oh my god this wolf all right this yeah. isn't thank you finally <laughs> the pathing in this area is it's not the best <laughs> at least now they'll get through the door Two dire wolves does help quite a lot in this scenario. We are very, very close to having to fight um, the Mind Flare, the Brain Devourer. I forget what it's called. It is done. It's not nice. <gasps> Treasure! Aw, oh, what? Wait, wait, wait. Can I, can I? Critical failure. What is a critical failure on a on this kind of ability? Okay, well, anyways. Shall do as you ask. Oh no, this one's not gonna open. You can already tell. in there fighting god knows what because Lassie went around. Okay. Oh. Okay, here we go. That was just so weird. Lassie was just like, yep, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna, you know... Maybe I need to have this power attack mode active. I'm, I keep thinking about, um, I have the ability for cleave. The problem is, is that, like, it doesn't... Shall do as you ask. Cleave doesn't really... I don't know if it's not activating. Oh, hey, wow, we actually destroyed that. Normally, those ones are the ones that we can't destroy. They're just... They're a little too, uh... They're a little too powerful. Um, right. Yeah, well. We've done it. We will strike you down. Or fall in the attempt. There we go. Okay. Up. Oh, okay. Cool. You got me. You got me with that as well. I'm just, just letting you know. That sucked. We're gonna need to rest. No, nope, everyone's doing very badly. Hang on. Uh oh, that's bad. Oh, he died. Come on, come on, come on. Uh oh, uh oh. I drink your blood. Okay, that just injured him. That's not good. <laughs> come on, girl. Thank you. All right, we're good. Okay. Can you cast this, please? Concentration failure. Oh, you're kidding me. Okay. Why is he attacking me? Oh, here we go. Also, I can't talk to you. Oh, because I think I paused. Follow. Follow. Wait, no, come back. Just a man like any other. I'm hoping it's one of the water Davian creatures. Who are you and why are you helping the head jailer? I'm good and thanked. I was king of the pits till head jailer come down here. Now he king of the pits and I is just his lackey. Hmm... Huh. You let the head jailer walk all over you? How come? He have power to tune folk into zombies. He reminds me of, um... He has, like, the accent that, like... Um... God, what? 
Waka has in Final Fantasy X. He'd do it to gods, even. He threatened to do it to me. To, I'm not saying that's the accent that I'm doing. The accent. Oh, hey. Hello, Phantom 12,000. Welcome. There's nothing here. Jesus, I'm not going to be mean. Guards into zombies? What are you talking about? You meet them soon enough. They down in his lair, protecting him, feeding him. He say he make me like them if I not serve him. Is there any way to rescue them? Ha! Maybe you can talk sense into them. Talk to them all, and maybe there'd be no place for brain creature to jump to. It gets into new people real fast. Yeah, maybe that it. Talk to the people so they go away. Otherwise, you'd best kill the thing inside the head jailer and kill it fast. What's inside him? Have you seen it? Yeah, I seen it. Um, it's like it's small like a dog and smells like dead moss. No head, just a big brain, all open. That must be why it likes eating them so much. Sounds like one of the water davian creatures. I not know about that stuff. I just know that the head jailer was tough, and if brain creature can get him, then it's stronger than him. So it's really dangerous. All right, you stay here. I'm gonna go after the head jailer. <sighs> I not stay here. If head jailer kill you, he know I surrender to you, and he eat my brain for that. I don't want that. You go fight him. Maybe talk to his guards too, so they leave and brain thing not jump in them. Yeah, you do that. I get out of here. All right. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, we are gonna have to actually use our stone of recall because uh, our our teammate died. But we're very close to beating this area. Passing from this world unsettling, as was my return to life. Yet I sense there has been no permanent harm done. Do you need me to join you once more? Yes. My blade is yours to command. All right. While we're here, we might as well make the most of this and sell Welcome. some stuff. Do you have news of the? Can you heal us? Yeah, boy, even though actually I need to rest, so that's not going to help me at all. I require temple services, even though you hate me for some stupid reason. Um, sell. Sell, sell, sell. I could technically use those, but I'm not going to use those. 64? I thought I'd get a lot more out of it than that. Um, I'm not going to be able to use those can't use well I could but I'm not <laughs> that's a potion that I would like very much to keep put that there okay I was like what happened to my potion what did I just do I want to move the bow over here and then that way I can do this and I can move this here um potion of cure critical wounds that's a new one for me how much money do I have? 1,375. That's not bad. Gloves of Spellcraft. So I get Spellcraft plus three. In an effort to help stave off the expansion of the Mulhar and Theocracy, several Red Wizards of Thay work together to create these gloves. Whilst the gloves assist mages in recognizing some of the powerful spells being cast, the superior numbers of the Mulhar and mages still give them an example. Okay. That's not actually all that useful, so... Discipline. I don't know what discipline does. Hmm. I don't know what that does, so... I probably won't use it. She has sometimes an amulet that's very useful. Not that one. I will never be able to afford this one, but it is very, very useful because it's Disable Trap plus two, Lore plus two, Open Lock plus two, Persuade plus two, and Search plus two, and Spell Resistance 12. So it's a very, very useful one. I'm just not going to be able to use it. <laughs> Natural Armor. We don't have a necklace. Um... A natural armor necklace would be nice, but we're missing a ring, a belt, a necklace, and boots. She sells belts. Guiding light, so that inertial, inertial barrier. What's that do? Oh, Jesus. A lot. 
It sells for 1,100. Oh no, I'm sorry. It sells for 11,000. Never mind. <laughs> no, thank you. Well, Oceans is expensive. All right, anyways, <laughs> it was worth a shot, but that's just not gonna happen. We need to rest because a lot of our spells are used up. And after fighting Kurdon Fanked, or Funked, whatever his name is, we're actually gonna go ahead and, uh, oh wait, real quick, before I forget. We're gonna go ahead and summon everything, make sure we're prepared, and then we're gonna pay 50 gold and go back. All right. Um, am I nervous? Yes. Very. Because we have a boss fight coming up. Oh, I need to put this on me. Um, that's the exit? Wait. The head jailers. Ooh, hello. Cut on fanked. Ate another inmate today. Solitary confinement may be the only solution. Day 2085. Emmernick fell asleep on the job again today. He's been reprimanded and demoted to storeroom duty on the main floor. Emmernick is the elf that we ran into, so the fact that he fell asleep on duty is the only reason he survived. Meeting with my cousin, Lady Tanglebrook, in the tunnels today. The poor woman has lost almost everyone to the Wailing Death, and I fear there is little I could do to console her. Oh, well. Uh, you didn't console her, my friend. You ate her brain. So, good job. Alright, this is going to go very poorly. Now, I think we're supposed to be able to, like... Oh, here we go. Like, I think I can... Snap out of it. Ugh. All right, well, that didn't work. So here's the head jailer. So it's going to jump into him. Um, hang on, I'm going to cast this. All right, everybody attack the intellect devourer. It's going to go jump into another guard, which is fine. <coughs> we're, we're pretty strong, so I think it'll be okay. It makes dog noises. All right, that's fine. All right. I want health back. <laughs> I got health back, all right. Unfortunately, it's gonna get its health back, but that's fine. Okay, so now it is out, and I'm just going to really quickly cast this on me. Um, we're also going to use this. Oh my god, it's angry. Why does it like me so much? Attack them! Okay, hang on. Oh my god, stop attacking me! What was that? Intelligence decreased. Great. <laughs> okay, that's gonna help with that. Cure light wounds. this like a weird thing to put on in the middle of a fight? Okay, there we go. Everybody else is doing fine. I was just the only one that was dying for some reason. I'm gonna give him bull strength. It's near death, but can never have too much strength. Yeah, boy, there we go. Oh, I think that actually gave us Hell yeah, we did it! Devourer's brain. Got him. 
Got him. I used all my spells, but honestly, I'm actually really happy with that because I'm finally using my spells somewhat intelligently. You're a hundred percent trapped. I don't trust this chest at all. These ones are always... Yeah, okay. See? Told you. I told you. I knew it was trapped. <laughs> I feel bad that we weren't able to save the guards, but I think the only way that you're able to do that is like to run around while like your teammates, I guess keep the head jailer busy or something? I don't know. Either way, the head jailer was not savable. <laughs> that much is for sure. Um, I'm sure there's a way out of here. There's got to be some kind of, like, exit. Um, or at least there should be, pro you know, not, pro I shouldn't say proper, but modern game design and level design usually has some type of exit near the uh the end of the level in order to make it easy to leave granted i have a pretty uh powerful item that i could use however i would like very much to experience something so can i like click here no. <laughs> I was like, if I click here, will she just, like, root to it? No. So, I think it should be relatively easy to get out of here, though. There's just something that I would like very much to do. But hey, we cleared out the jails, and you know what that means. There's more space, you know? Now they've got loads of space for criminals. I did them a favor, honestly. Oh, also, we should go this way because we need to talk to Sebel... Sebel... Sebli. Her name was Sebel. <laughs> Sibyl. Alright. Oh, wait. Hang on. I'm in the lead again. So, I'm going to equip this. And I am also going to equ equip offhand. There we go. Oh my god, Dalen, you scared me to death. <laughs> I think I mentioned this last time, but my brother-in-law's name is Dalen. So every time I say Dalen, I'm like having like kind of a a weird, a weird moment. Oh, hey, we could go talk to What's-His-Face. He's going to be somewhere over here. <clears throat> Might be easier for, unless there's some kind of exit that I just simply do not know about in this building or in this map. It might have been easier for me to just go back. Uh, hey. Emmernick. Looks like things are cooling down. I'm going to stay around here and try to get things back in order. Thanks for all the help. Hoping for a... Uh... What's the word when you get a... Like a, like a raise, but it's not a raise. It's a... You know... Upgrade. In your job. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Promotion. That's the word. <laughs> promotion. He's hoping to get a promotion. Alright, we're just going to walk right out the front door, ladies and gentlemen. Just like that. We gotta go talk to Sebel anyways. Uh, yeah, anyways. Let's just, uh, let's just mosey on out of here, fam. Oh, the thing didn't happen. Thought it would. Mizzen Mast Mercantile and Militia 8. We didn't even go over there. Oops. Oh. Did I go into this place before? It's Mercantile Place. Hello, I didn't. Sarah. Step right up. I've got just what you're looking for. My shop ain't what it used to be, but I'm still a shopkeeper. Let me see your wares. What did it say? <gasps> Favorable. He likes me. <laughs> Base armor class is one. No, none of that. Thanks. Scale mail, this is four. We want five. 
boots of striding, boots of dexterity. Ooh, bracers of armor. Oh no, I have bracers. Oh, I have gloves. My gloves of discipline. Wait, those aren't very useful. Or are they? I don't know. This is a oh, cloak of protection. Okay, okay. Oops. Do you consider this modern game design? No. <laughs> um, it's it's gonna be older game design for sure. A long sword. One d eight. I'm tempted to get a long sword, or even a rapier. A one d six. Maybe I should get this. A scimitar. I don't know. They all do the same damage. It's just that they do slightly different damage. This sickle, though, is... It... You know... It's kind of useless. I just have to decide what I want to use. A double axe. But I can't. My beloved double axe. Look at it. It's be oh, the great axe. Oh, I love great axes. Anyways. <clears throat> getting a little too excited about that. Can't use it. I'm a druid. So I love you. Um... I don't know, man. All right, what is the rapier? So it's a piercing type, right? I can use it because I'm an elf. I can use this because I'm a druid, which makes me lean towards the scimitar, but also because scimitars are kind of awesome. 1d8. But I do, I, I do believe I have more critical threat, which means that I'm going to be much more likely to, to be attacked by stuff. Natural armor... Um, we could buy an amulet. Might give us a little more. Yeah, all right. Whatever, man. It's worth it, I guess. <laughs> I like this like nice happy music that's playing while we're in while we're in there. Hey, Sebel. I love all the voices, but we've like murdered everyone. Oh, Sados Sebel. There we Hello go. Hello there. I'm glad to see. All right, yeah. Escape prisoners seem to be a little less vicious. Certainly they are still dangerous, but whatever was driving the riot seems to be gone. I have no explanation. Something was controlling the head jailer, Elafin. I've got rid of it. Let's have a look at that. It's the brain of an intellect devourer, isn't it? So that's why Captain Elafin was acting so strangely, of course. The intellect devourer was one of the water Davian creatures that Lady Erebeth has been searching for to help cure the plague. You'd better return this to her. That said, this is proof enough that you've done the job I required of you. I imagine 300 gold in danger pay will be sufficient. Sure. I thank you for all the trouble you've taken in completing the task, then. I will speak well of you when I make my report. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must prepare that report to present to Lord Nasher. He's not well, but news of your success should lift his spirits some. You'll love to see it. I did it, boys. I did it, boys and girls and, and folks. Ouch. Um, let's take the spirits. Alright, so we're gonna go turn this in and then we will I am weighted down too heavily. I nope. <laughs> I was like, can I take that? <laughs> and that was a flat no. Um, alright, now I believe Aw, why is my intelligence just permanently decreased? Heckin' rude, man. Alright, we can go ahead and use this and go back. And also rest. <laughs> because why not? We deserve it. That intellect thing better disappear. Why is my intellect being drained? Or my intelligence? Am I... Am I missing something? Oh. I think the Welcome. dire wolf has that. Do you have news of the missing water Davian creek? Can you heal us? <laughs> My intelligence is being devoured. Oh, thank you. I've recovered one of the reagents. Well done. I <laughs> knew you wouldn't let me down. My face cam was wobbling. Oh, that was probably me because I was shifting. Well done, it's Yobi Yui Yang. Um, explain about the intellect of our the reason we lost contact with those in the prison? As if the plague was not enough. Where others have found only failure, you have discovered shining success. And you don't even like me. Do you like me now? Battling the plague has drained the coffers of Neverwinter. 
I Ooh. regret I cannot offer you more than 500 gold pieces for all you have accomplished. Thank you. Is there something else you need? Um, I need to talk course. to you? I will do my best to help with whatever you need to know. What do you think of Duster? I think the Hellmite is arrogant, sanctimonious, self-righteous, and holier than thou. <laughs> Forgive me for being so blunt, but Duster and I do not see eye to eye. <laughs> I don't know why it always cracks me up to hear her say Duster stuff like that. Duster challenges my every decision on general principle, or so it would seem. He is constantly accusing me of abandoning my faith and not trusting enough in the power of the divine. Why do you put up with him? Sometimes I think Dester and his Hellmites do more to hinder my efforts than help them. Huh. But Fenthic assures me they bring hope to the city. And hope is something the people desperately need. Do they? Is there anything I mean, not else? Do the Hellmites bring hope? Anyways, do you have a... Uh, no, that's fine. Farewell. Goodbye. I think I need to go talk to Dester or something. Or, rather, um, to Fenthic. Hey, Dester, guess what? Okay, I did it. Bra? Oh, I look like a pirate. I love it. Hello again, and well met. Oh, never mind. Had Erebeth delivered the water Davian, we could have kept their location secret. Oh, please. And the tragedy that befell the Academy. Oh, please. You can't even keep your, 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 your face straight. <laughs> I'm not very good at insults. All right, so we finished this quest. We can go ahead and end this here and work on uh, learning how to make modules in Neverwinter Nights. So let's go ahead and, and pop out real quick. Um, look at us. We're beautiful. We could also talk to Dalen and get to know yes. him better. Is there something you need? Uh, I want to talk for a while. My strength is in weapons, not words. Is he over you, Yang? If you're to be my henchman, I'd like to know more about you. I would ask, is he over you, Yang, that before I tell, my, tell you about myself, you tell me something of yourself. Among my people, it is said that in knowing your companions, we come to know ourselves. Well, then why were you so against it before that? I admit that I fight only for gold, but I know nothing of your motivations. Why do you serve Neverwinter during these darkest of times? I've seen too much of death and suffering from the place stand idly by. In times of darkness, great heroes must do great deeds. It's how legends are forged. <laughs> Golden riches. I'm going to go with number one. You are an honorable woman, Isio Yang. I too seek honor here in Neverwinter, though of a different sort. I came to the city to make a name for myself, Isio Yang. I, yeah, I don't know how I'm going to make a name for myself. Nobody's going to be able to say my name. <laughs> Um, to forge a legend that even the tribe of my mother would hear. Instead, I found myself guarding crates and barrels against common thugs. Yet even in the sordid world of the docks, my reputation spread. Several captains asked me to join their crews. Perhaps if the plague had not come, the name Dalen Red Tiger would have become a legend on the high seas. Don't worry, Dalen. Stick with me in the bards. Um, we'll sing your praises. Perhaps it is for the best. Had I joined a ship's crew, it is unlikely the Uthgard would ever have heard of my accomplishment. My place is here, in the north. This is the land of my birth, and this is where I must fulfill my destiny. I will bring no honor to my mother's name by fleeing on a ship. Only if I stay can I hope to redeem the shame of my father's blood and end my exile. Cork it? No, I... No. The last thing I need is your problems dumped on me. Jesus! Exile? Shame of your father's blood? What are you talking about? Please, forgive me, Isio Vyuyang. I became lost in the moment. The drums of glory momentarily distracted me from the task at hand. It will not happen again. Tell me what you were talking about. I want to hear it. Please, Isio Vyuyang, the things I said before. The words were, this is not the time to speak of such things. Perhaps later I will speak more of this, but not now. All right, we have things to learn about our, our good friend Dalen. Um, we're going to go ahead and save. Look at her. She's glorious. I. It's very unlikely that we will get any other armor. Does her armor look a little funny? Did it always look like that, or am I insane? Did her armor always look like that? This part, I mean. Like, it's, like, flaring up for some reason. I, it, 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 did it always look like that? Well, I love her. Anyways, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. I love... That I just have two dire wolves. So I, I think I just saved, but I'll save again for my state of mind. And then we're going to exit, excuse me, to the main menu. And then I am also going to swap this from game capture to display capture.
perfection. And then this will be angry. <laughs> and then we'll do the Stardew Valley soundtrack, because why not? And then I might lower this a curse smudging, because... You know. I don't want to deafen you guys with Stardew Valley. Although, let me know if it's too quiet and you can't hear it, because the entire point, obviously, is for it to be heard. So, let's go ahead. We're going to launch the Aurora tool set. So, I'm going to lower this so I don't distract myself. But anyways, right. Where we are at now in this is chapter 3, which is where the new module is going to begin. Because we're actually going to start making a new module with this lovely tutorial book that I have. Uh, now, what I'm, what I didn't read to you guys, and I'm glad I read it on my own, is chapter two, which is called The Game Plan, and it's basically a design document, and it talks about, like, the story. So, I'll read you this paragraph at the very least, so you guys know what we're working on. Um, it says, two small frontier settlements cut off from the rest of civilization are battling nature and each other to eke out a living in an unforgiving part of the world. As if they didn't have enough problems, they've just been discovered by a xenophobic native race that wants them gone at all cost. costs. The PCs were hired to escort a supply caravan to the region, but its, it's unexpected destruction at the hands of the enemy has left the PCs stranded in this difficult world. As the only neutral party in the region... The PCs present the only, or represent the only hope of destroying the enemy and saving the region. So, technically speaking, this one is created with the idea that there could be more players. Because Neverwinter Nights is actually multiplayer. Um, I've just never had anybody to play with. <laughs> I also don't do roleplay. Um, not online. I've had some very uncomfortable experiences with roleplay in online settings, so I just don't. And I think most of the online Neverwinter community does roleplay, which, to be fair, is basically D&D, but there's just something about the internet that makes it instantly seedy, and I don't know what it is. Like, I, I can roleplay at a table with people looking them in the eyes. I'm not gonna roleplay anything ridiculous. I don't normally do romance plots for my characters. Um... Not with real life people, because I don't know, I'm just uncomfortable with that. I know, like, some people will be like, oh, but it's not you, it's your character. It's like, bruh, it's me. The character is me, okay? I'm the character. I understand that the romance is between our characters, or it's supposed to be. I still have to act it out, <laughs> and I don't want to. So, that's just me. Um, so, I've never played this game with other people. Emity, <laughs> just keeping that ridiculous name to practice saying it because you want to give it to your new baby. <laughs> my poor child, if I named if I named my child Isio Vuyang Salu Salui what was it? Sen Faluisend. That's what it was. It was Sen Faluisend. Anyways, so the plot of this is actually really, really cool and it plays like a D D module. I'm module. <laughs> it plays like a D and D campaign for sure, which is actually pretty neat. It gave me a lot to think about while reading their game design setup, um, because ultimately this Neverwinter Nights tool set is legitimately just making D and D campaigns. That's that's the whole point, and it, that's what it's supposed to be. And I love that. Nothing wrong with that. So coming into this with more of a DM mentality versus. A like game dev mentality I think is gonna give me a better um, is gonna give me better control over what I'm able to uh, apply I don't know I lost the word that I wanted just I'm gonna understand and and be able to take my idea which is like a, it's mostly like a Cinderella RPG, but that's not really what we're doing here, right? We're doing a Cinderella dungeon campaign, Dungeons and Dragons campaign in version, you know, second edition. Um, is that me? No, it's the fire in the background. I hate the sound of mouths making noise. So I thought, I hear the fire crackling in the background, but it was while my mouth was moving. So I thought I was making that noise, and I was like, oh, hell no. I'm about to put the mic all the way over there if I'm making that sound. I can't listen to that. <laughs> um, anyways, so they, just to give you an overview of, like, 
excuse me, the pages of this, they break it down into scenes, which is very, very cool. And they kind of give you an idea of all the areas that are going to be attached to each scene. And then um, they talked, this author, so there's two authors to this. There's a programming author and then there's the like DM author. And the DM author does understand the tool set, which is very, very cool. Um, he mentions that it's like the first time they've ever made a mo like a full module within the Neverwinter Nights um, tool set. But the way that he's approaching it is that he understands how to use the tool set, but I believe he's a dungeon master, so he plays D&D. &D. So obviously, the most important thing that he has is that he understands how to play D&D. &D. So I believe that they actually picked a really good person to write this. Um, so the whole idea behind it is that it is structured to be played potentially alongside other players, which I feel <laughs> would make it so OP. Um, that would be a whole other kind of balancing, but it, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> so why does Cinderella need to dungeon crawl from a narrative point of view? Right. Well, if we want to talk, you know, game design for Cinderella, I actually have a lot, um, in mind for that. And we can pop over here really quickly and use, if I can find it. There it is, campfire. We use campfire. I like campfire. Campfire is, is pretty simple to use. It's pretty straightforward. Um, we'll do a new story and we'll call this Cinderella uh, Neverwinter Night. Neverwinter Nights. This is just going to be, I don't know, D&D. &D. <laughs> Dark Hobica. We'll come back to this. Um, Cinderella Neverwinter Nights. Okay. And then I really, really quickly would like very much to change the way that it looks. Just because that's how I do. And also, there's something else that I really need to get rid of. Auto hide. Yes, please. Auto save every 10 minutes. And then we're going to do fantasy. Awesome. Okay. Right. Okay. So... Not that. Um, right. Okay. Maybe I'll come back to this. The point is, or we'll go to the encyclopedia. Um, we'll call this. Um, I don't know. We'll call no scratch pad. That's what we'll call this. We'll call this scratch pad. This matters to me. <laughs> Um, we're going to add a group called notes. There we go. And then we're not going to link anything. So we're going to add not an entry. Actually, that's, that's not what I wanted. What? No, 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 no. What did you do? Okay. There we go. Sorry. I'm being ridiculous. What do I want? I want to add a panel. Okay. There we go. Potential uh, synopsis, right. So, I might call this a summary so that I don't write an entire synopsis. But the entire point here is that Cinderella, or we might actually call her Cinders to make up for the fact that characters are not going to be inherently female. So, if a player makes any type of character, it doesn't matter what they name them, um... I'm going to suggest that players create a new character because I 100% want this to be played from level one. Playable, excuse me, playable from level one. Some of some modules are created so that you could start them from level 40, which I believe is where the main campaign takes the player. What we want, or what I want, is for a person to create a brand new character for this module. They don't have to. I can't force them to. But they'll have a better time if they do, I think. Um... We'll have to balance it to suit that, and I might make a Cinderella-type character or name her Ella or something um, just to suit the storyline. Now, some some situation, some issues that we're going to have, um, so we'll call this Known Issues, and I'm actually going to put this up because this is going to be much shorter. So one issue that we're going to have is that we need to be able to respond to the player making characters of any type of race or 
um, morality. <laughs> What's the word? Your your character's alignment. Jesus, I forgot the word alignment. Yeah, so we need to be. So the mod needs to be respond. Uh, I want it to be able to react to the player's um, uh, race and alignment. So if their Cinderella is ha half orc, that's fine. Like that should be allowed. It shouldn't be ignored. It shouldn't be uh, pretend. You know, like pretend that Cinderella is like a human, right? Because that wouldn't make sense. It also wouldn't be a very good D and D campaign if I created a storyline and then just ignored the player's input, right? So that's one issue that we have that we're going to have to be able to apply. And also the alignment. So if my story is like, oh, Cinderella is this really wonderful person who's loved by everyone and the person created a chaotic evil character. Uh, again, <laughs> not a very good D&D &D campaign, is it? So we have those two major two major issues, which are the first ones that I can think of. I know there's a couple other things that I need to be aware of, but those are the main ones. The second, oh, the second issue is the prince. Um, so the prince obviously is reliant, if we have a prince character, that, that gender is reliant upon the player creating a very specific type of character, which is a human girl. So at least in this, in the case of Neverwinter Nights, which is a, a binary system. Um, that said, what we could do is I, th I tried to think, I tried to think very hard on how I could possibly apply a solution to this. And I'm still working on it. We could, I don't believe there's a way for the player to choose an NPC. So like if I, you know, if the player is a female or whatever and they want a princess love interest, um, then they, you know, like a, a window pops up or something. I don't, I don't know if I can do that. Um, that said, I think I saw someone mention in another Reddit post that I, I think, he, I think it was yesterday. We were talking, they were talking about like, how could you force the player's character to look a certain way? And they commented on, on like use body part or something like that. And I, as I was thinking about that, I was like, I wonder if there's like an equivalent for like replacing an NPC, right? Um, cause if so, I mean, I don't know how, how completely in control the, the C language is in Neverwinter Night in the tool set, right? So I don't know how much of the actual game engine I have control of because theoretically if you have the, the coding language you could do anything um, but as I haven't dove in yet and seen for myself the depths of which C controls and all of the different functions I don't a hundred percent know for sure what I'm going to be able to do so we might have to put a pin on this one solution was that I could incorporate into the story a series of siblings so two brothers, two sisters, just all of them. I mean, it could be that or it could be that the king is dying and ha doesn't have an heir for whatever reason. And so in reality, it's not a prince, but it's actually like like four candidates for the throne or something. And I'm going to write this down real quick. Four candidates for the throne, not actually an heir. But four people, 2F, 2M, just to stick with Neverwinter Nights, um, that could take the throne, um, choice hinging on players' decisions. So that would be a very interesting gameplay mechanic because then, of course, the players' decisions will change the outcome of the entire module which would be very fun obviously that's more of a dm type scenario or a dungeons and dragons type scenario it's more player friendly um more so what i'm looking for player input friendly so we'll come back to that though as i as i learn more about how to make this hey gauntas that's not really Cinderella. So this is going to be Cinderella-esque, but because this is going to be heavily Dungeons and Dragons, we're going to take a lot of liberties. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of liberties 
we will still have an evil stepmother and evil stepsisters. Um, so <laughs> that's going to be really interesting to apply, though. Okay, so the idea, right? Let's let's change this. We're going to say Cinderella um, or Cinders. Cinders is going to be the nickname because it's more of a gender neutral type name. So I don't have to worry about like the player's gender. Um, so regardless of what you name your character, what's going to wind up happening is that, um, your, your character or, um, oh yeah, your family is going to treat you like crap and still call you cinders essentially. And that's just a way to make it so that it's still within the Cinderella realm. And actually I have a Cinderella game that's called cinders and she's called cinders instead of Cinderella. Excuse me. So Cinders is basically relegated to like the only servant of the household, but this is a fantasy realm and there are monsters. It's a kind of, you know, it's a D&D &D realm. There are things out there and Cinderella lives, uh, Cinders lives with, we're going to say her. We're just, <laughs> we're going to make this simple so that I don't have to type slashes everywhere, but we're just going to say her. Um, so Cinders excuse me, lives with her stepmother and stepsisters. Um, should stepmother, stepsisters have separate genders? Okay. See, again, this is reliant upon if I can even do this, but if the player is a man, should we have it be like stepfather and stepbrothers? We'll get into that. Maybe we'll just leave it. So we'll just say Cinders lives with her stepmother and stepsisters, right? Um, in a nice cottage. No, oh, hang on. Nice but old cottage in a... Where to say in a glade? Ooh. I've been meaning to try campfire, but also maybe... We're, I will say if you get campfire, get it in steam, okay? Get it in steam, um, if you buy Campfire from their website, you get one install and you don't get another one. If you get it in Steam, you get it on multiple machines. So buy it on Steam. It's way, way better to buy it on Steam. Um, <clears throat> I misspelled Glade. I, now, granted, this was years ago when it was first a thing and when I first bought it, um, and then I found out that I couldn't install it on any other machines, and I was like, this is a little weird. And uh, and then on Steam, they were just like, eh, because they can't control that on Steam. Like, once you buy software on Steam, just the way the, the, the way that Steam works, you own the software, so you can't limit it to one machine. So I was like, <laughs> why? Why would I buy this on their websites? I bought it on Steam. I even looked it up too. I was like, what's the benefit of the Steam version? And people were like, you can have it on multiple computers. And I was like, yunk. Um, <laughs> so I digress. Okay, so Cinders lives in an old cottage in a glade, right? With her stepmother and her stepsisters. Um, due to her mother dying and then her father dying. We're going to do a little bit of live action Cinderella here. Her, mo her stepmother is... Um, trying to work to pay for the step uh step mother's expensive tastes um cinders now takes on the job of um takes on the job of being the servant of the household her room is in an attic but uh, she has nowhere to sleep except in front of the fireplace in the kitchen. Um, the servants, you would assume there'd be servants quarters for a place like this. The servants quarters are uh, falling apart due to, due to lack of funds and help. So well, that's what we'll say. World Anvil, I think, is a subscription, if I remember correctly. We can take a look. World and wor Word? Word Anvil. No, is it World Anvil? It is World Anvil. I'm dumb. I've, if I remember correctly, this one is a subscription. 
And that's why I don't own it. Because I really like World Anvil. It's very cool. That's... <laughs> I recognize this. This looks like... This is either Incarnate or... Um, the other one. Oh my god, I just forgot what it was called. Okay, well anyways. I'm not going to sit here and try to remember forever. It starts with a W. Um... <laughs> Oh, where's the pricing? Um, ooh, world building prompts. Is that free? Ooh. Hang on, I'm gonna distract you. <laughs> Am I insane? I could swear, create your free account, but I, I'm telling you, there's like, you have to pay in order to gain access to all of the features. Hang on. Before I go and log in, real quick, let me just turn this off. I knew I had an account. Okay. Yeah, see, okay. Memberships. There we go. Pricing. Okay, here we go display capture so a yearly fee and I remember this being yeah it's kind of expensive so you get there's the free man which is all basic features masters $54 for a year um, grandmaster is $97 a year and then for sage is $299 a year so these all give you different um i know it's expensive it's again why i don't own it um so you can do unlimited articles you can have 10 worlds with this version you have access to article templates you have access to maps but you get more you get more like things that you can do in each version so in the Freeman version, you, oops, my bad, I didn't mean to click that. Um, you can go all the way up to world data exporting, okay? So this is where it stops. Then you get world homepage basic, advanced extreme extreme. I don't know what that means. And then this is where it really happens. So subscribers, you can't have any subscribers in the Freeman version. Private worlds and articles, you can't. Chronicles? Nope. Whiteboards? Nope. Creator's Notebooks? Secrets? Articles? No ads? Themes and CSS personalization? So all of this stuff you can't have in this version. And then when you get here, it's where you start losing out on this version. This is where you start losing out on this version, which I don't even know. There's so much stuff, and I feel like 100% of this is... Uh, like, they just came up with more and more stuff so they could charge you more. I don't know. Um, I would use it. I love the concept of it. I mean, maybe it's something that I could look into using, trying to use from the free version, but I digress. The free version will suit you just fine. Yeah, probably. Yes. Uh, it's probably going to export better than I will say campfire doesn't export great. <laughs> um, if I come to the ex this and I go to export entry to PDF, um, Let's pop this into my downloads. And then we're going to open that up and I'll show you guys. It looks awful. <laughs> I mean, it's not like the worst. It's just uh, like it looked all nice there. And then it's just like, oh, this is a little better. Oh, no. See, here's the issue. It <laughs> so I have all of my like my numbers. It just takes everything and pops it into one paragraph and removes all white space. So not not super great also real quick uh let me see if i can hang on before i do this before i accidentally show something that i should not show let me see if i can okay this is fine okay this is fine <laughs> Do you recognize this contest? It's very small. I know this isn't helpful at all, but uh, I believe I believe this should be familiar. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> some weird prepare. Yeah, I know. Really, a deep cut. <laughs> 
I believe you drew that for me, right? Let's go back to... Oh, that was a long time ago, so now my brain's like, but did he, though? <laughs> um, right. Due to the dangers of the world. Yeah, exactly. It was when I was streaming Guns of Icarus. That game was awesome. Now <laughs> you feel really... Imagine how I feel. Some people have come back to comment on my stuff, and they're like... I'm in college now, I've graduated college, I'm getting a job, and I'm like, I beg your what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, you ain't. You go back to being a child, sir, or madam, or human. Um, anyways, due to the dangers of the world, Cinders has had to also pick up skills of survival. The forests surrounding the cottage are no longer as peaceful as they once were and the only thing protecting the cottage is i'm trying to remember what i i remember don't put passwords to the chat again i think about that all the time i really do <laughs> and i still am so angry the only thing protecting the cottage is the presence of a we're gonna okay so this is part of the story but we're going to even see if I can do this, but we'll have to, we'll, we'll type this out and then we'll tweak it as I go along and discover what's actually possible within the mod. But, uh, so the only thing protecting the cottage that Cinders and her family live in is the presence of a dryad tree, um, slash glade very close to Cinders's home. We could also theoretically, or, and, we could do and, or, um, magic stones set into the property a long time ago. So, just, it's a historical property. Packers gain access to my computer. Oh, they're gonna find it's 50 terabytes of Waluigi smut. <laughs> um... So let's see, Cinder's home and or magic stones sent into the property a long time ago. So anyways, the point is the glade that they live in is safe. It's supposed to be a very beautiful, happy glade with a nice, cozy cottage. Um, there's, I know there's like chickens and stuff within the NPC category. So we can put like a little farm that they have. And then Cinder's, you know, has to take care of all that stuff. Uh, so if we add another panel... We could say quest ideas. Um, quest ideas are like collecting items for food. So like defeating an enemy grants ingredients, which I believe we can create custom items. So that's a possibility. So we can do that. Excuse me. So making food using said items. We don't necessarily need... To have uh, the player character have the craft ability to do this, we could literally just have them do step one, which is collecting items, and then go to the quest giver or go to the next area, click on it, and then turn in those items and get a new item. So we don't necessarily need to overcomplicate this step. Basically, our beginning quests are going to be very, very simple just to get the idea across of like her having to do all this work while her family stays home and is lazy, right? So... Eventually, some other quests that we're going to have is Cinders has to go to town in order to pick up supplies, which obviously is a dangerous um, thing to do. In town, Cinders does odd jobs for money because their family is poor. And then you could potentially save away money. Um, save... Saving money optional. Now, I don't know how in-depth I want to get with multiple endings. Um, there may be a lot of things that we wind up cutting because it just winds up being way too complicated for the mod. So, and that's totally fine. So, we'll shoot for the stars now and then as we go forward. Which, obviously, we're not even working on this yet. Um, but, you know, as we go forward, I'll start trimming the fat on this. So, let's come back up here. Um... One day, 
I had the idea that we would start from before Cinders grows up, but that would be good in an RPG, not necessarily in Neverwinter Nights where I can't make your player a child. That would be weird and hard. Um, and we don't, I don't want to overcomplicate this. So we'll just start from the present and then, you know, reveal stuff as we go. So one day Cinders discovers uh, that the Dryad is under attack and saves the Dryad. Regardless of player morality, I think that we're going to just have this be a thing. Um, it is within Cinders' best interest to protect the Dryad if that's part of the protection of the Glades. So I think even if they were chaotic and evil... I don't know. All right, whatever. We'll just ignore it. <laughs> it's part of the story. It's like it's like in this campaign, right? The campaign that we're going to be doing in this. The whole point of this is that your characters are helping people and you have to go save like survivors and stuff. So even if your player character is chaotic evil, there's some things that your character is going to wind up doing even though it doesn't really match up with their morality. I'll address morality later. I have some ideas. Um Effectively, Cinders is going to be collecting allies. My whole idea was that I wanted Cinders to be her own reward. Because in a lot of Cinderella stories, you have like the prince who is basically giving up the option to form powerful alliances with like other countries or stuff like that. And it doesn't feel... I mean, the whole story of Cinderella is not very realistic, but, you know, it, it feels like a bad choice to choose, like, a, a homely country girl who's been abused by her family her whole life and has no dowry and no armies and nothing to give to the crown or the people, really. And I know it's all like, and then with kindness and love, she watched over the people, but we're not... <laughs> a D&D &D campaign is not really the place for that. Excuse me. So... The idea was I wanted throughout the mod for Cinders' quests to effectively lead up to her building huge alliances and then also um, tackling an evil that is affecting the immediate kingdom. So in this case, the evil is actually going to be a dragon um, defeating an evil in the land. Dragon. So it's going to be some type of dragon. And we'll go we'll go roughly by some D&D &D monster lore just for funsies because also having um having like workable limits to work with alongside makes things like this a lot easier. So one day so anyways, the long story unless the prince in question is maybe the youngest of five in the succession and the king queen doesn't really care if he marries a commoner. Yes, but then that wouldn't mean that he'd become king because um so the idea, I mean, okay. One of the ideas that I had for multiple endings was the type of character that you play and the type of alliances that you make could change the type of, like, dra it's going to be like a Dragon Age-esque ending where it's just like, you know, talking about all of the, the after effects of your, of your quest, right? It's just like a story like, where are they now kind of thing. Um... And the idea I got for that was actually from that visual novel that I mentioned, Cinders. A beautiful game, by the way. It's, uh, let's see, I'll pull it up. Cinders. It is genuinely a very, very beautiful game. As very, very cool game, too. I almost have all the achievements. Hot diggity. Wow. Oh, yeah, here we go. Someone got a, uh, a dark Cinders. <laughs> <laughs> um, so depending on decisions that you make in the game of Cinders changes who you marry because the prince is not the only option and if you do marry the prince what type of ruler you are and if you don't marry at all there's like a whole other branch of endings that you can have there so stepsisters are secretly dragons <laughs> they ooh evil ooh no <laughs> I actually I want them to be involved in something but I don't know what. I, like, I was thinking of having them be involved in some kind of plot against the throne. But that might... I don't know. If the ultimate evil is a dragon, then I don't know if that's going to be worthwhile. And the only thing I can think of is that maybe the stepmother is like some ridiculously powerful mage or something. Um, just due to her own greed, she spends money as quickly as she earns it. And she's also quite lazy. So despite the fact that she's this extremely powerful mage... Um, 
should probably write this down somewhere. Uh, nah, nah. Um, let's add a scratch pad for characters. Character scratch pad. I call these scratch pads because they're not final entries within this um, stepmother. Super powerful mage, but very lazy, greedy, and proud. So the idea is just that she she could earn money. She just doesn't. The stepsisters, the step, um, add panel, we'll say stepsisters. It also makes sense for her to be an insanely powerful mage because we don't want the player to ever be stronger than their family, right? Because then why do you take shit from them, <laughs> right? Like it wouldn't make sense. Which one is the one with time travel? Oh wait, isn't that the plot? That's, I think you're talking, I, th mm, I think that's Cinderella 3? A Twist in Time, I think that's what it's called. Oops, Cinderella 3. Yep, A Twist in Time. I've never even seen that one. I can't believe I remembered that, wow. Um, yeah, that's where the stepmother gains access to, she like steals the fairy godmother's wand and then uh, takes back time. And I don't, I don't know anything else other than the plot of that. I do know that they somehow made Anastasia look very pretty, despite the fact that they did not change her face, which I love that. I, that is great art skills, and it's also great character development to keep the looks that are supposed to make her look ugly. But through kindness, like her face changing, genuinely just because she smiles and like has like kinder features, she looks pretty. And uh, I always thought that was really cool. <laughs> Monica just passively gains Disney knowledge via osmosis. Accurate. I want to have... I forget how to make... I don't think I can make chat appear now that I think about it. I was just thinking, like, chat? I can't really make chat appear, can I? Chat appearance? Oh, no, that's not it. My bad. Never mind. Oh, whatever. Anyways, <laughs> I'll, I'll figure that out when I'm not live streaming. So the stepsisters could be powerful, but they're also very, very lazy. So they've inherited their mother's magic. They're just not very good at it because they're lazy. And their mother doesn't want them to be workers. She wants... Where am I going? She wants them to be basically, you know, whatever. Unless you count ones from 1915... How many did they make? Yes, they only made three. Of the original animation, they made Cinderella 1, 2, and 3. Um, the second one, I think, is her struggling to fit into the palace because she spent her whole life being basically a servant. Um, the third one is the twist in time one. And that's it. <laughs> and I've heard, actually, that 2 and 3 are very, very good. I think I've seen 2 once. I don't remember it. <laughs> I don't remember it at all. I stopped trusting sequels when Mulan 2 happened. I hate that movie violently. Mulan 2 is the worst thing on the planet. It made me so angry. I like the... They made this weird, contrived... I don't know. I don't. Well, let's not talk about Mulan 2. Anyways, I also hate the Mulan live action. And I hate the Aladdin live action. But I don't hate anything more than I hate Mulan 2. <laughs> Anyways, so we're going to save the dryad. So Cinders saves the dryad and uh, they become allies. Up until that point, like the dryad doesn't talk to anybody, which is sensible for dryads. They don't really talk to people. They don't trust people, um, especially if you're a half orc. <laughs> and I think I think it'd be really funny if Cinders was a half orc, um, like just one of your parents was an orc for, you know, or maybe one of your parents was a half orc, which you're technically like a fourth orc i don't know anyways mulan 2 was direct to dvd and for good reason it was bad <laughs> it was so bad the main the main problem in that movie was that mulan and shang wanted different things shang wanted lots of kids mulan wanted two kids i hated it <laughs> It was a terrible, terrible sequel. It didn't match the beat of Mulan at all. It did not. It went from her being the hero of China to her having a domestic with her, her future husband. 
<laughs> okay, I'm fine. I'm over it. Anyways. Um, all right. So moving along, got to get off Mulan too, or I'll never recover. Um, so one day Cinders discovers that the dryad is under attack, saves the dryad, they become allies. Right. So this was another thing. Originally I wanted her to find either like a pony or an injured, just an injured baby animal and have it turn out to be something magical. And I was thinking it would be a unicorn. Alas, none of the engines that I work with has a unicorn model, which honestly is insulting. Um, <laughs> so that's out. I was thinking that she could find, um, she, uh, this is, so this is no longer in order. I don't know when this happens, but she eventually finds an injured person in the forest uh, now. Okay, this... Mm. All right, hang on. I gotta, re I gotta rethink this. The Lion King series is also just Shakespeare. <laughs> Lion King 2 is really good, but we all had a crush on Kovu. Everybody has a crush on Kovu. There's, there's no one who can escape Kovu. Just impossible. Impossible. Um, so, my original plot here was that Cinders would come across a injured person who is an extremely good person, and it turns out that that person is actually a gold dragon in disguise. And you befriend the gold dragon, and that's your super duper alliance for the kingdom that's like, yeah, wow, this is a great match. Hello, welcome to my, welcome to my son or daughter's throne. Um, why don't you be the ruler? <laughs> But if we want to have multiple endings and we want to be able to address the player's morality, which I would actually like to be able to apply options throughout the mod that allows the player to change excuse me, their alignment. So if they start off as chaotic evil and then start making choices that are good, I want that to reflect on their character. Like, I want their alignment to shift. So... And that's actually one way I think that I'll be able to control endings is to kind of use their alignment as a gauge. And the way that we can kind of do that is to change who she takes quests from. And it's going to be an either or type scenario. So if we have two people in the forest who require her help, right? One, uh, both are dragons in disguise, but... Uh, one is an evil dragon, and the other is a gold dragon. In D and D, gold dragons are basically like, like the best, the, just the nicest, best, lawfulest, goodest dragon that there is. <laughs> um, but I can't remember which one is the evilest. I don't think there is an evilest dragon. They're all kind of nasty in the. There's like two types of dragons. It basically comes down to the evil dragons and the good dragons. Um, more or less. But I don't remember which one is technically the evilest. I think it's the black dragon. I could be wrong. So right away, you don't necessarily fight them. And you don't even know that they're dragons. You just know that one is kind of you. And the other one is obviously quite good. There's no in between. It's going to be chaotic, evil, and lawful good. <laughs> um, who you take quests from changes your alignment and also might affect the world we'll have to see how feasible that is but I feel like that could be feasible they actually do more conventional plundering okay so maybe we'll go with red we'll go with whichever one feels like it's like the antithesis to the gold dragon so that we have like the gold and the the dead op we'll have Jesus and Satan okay <laughs> <laughs> just go straight to christianity all right <laughs> uh anyways so it changes your alignment and might affect the world we'll have to see how feasible that is but we could potentially do that cinderella is a dragon but i tell i toyed with that idea i toyed with the idea because you can hypothetically create a half dragon character because there are Within the monster appendix, there is actually, let's see if I can find it. Oops, too far. Here we go. A raven, a chicken, a bear. What? Where am I? I thought I thought dragons came first. My bad. Is there cows? There's no cows. There's only chickens. We'll have to find another way to get milk. Oh, there's a cow! <laughs> 
Yay. Sorry. I got very excited about there being a cow. There's no reason. Oh, there's an ox. Hell yeah. Um, anyways. <laughs> um, oh, here we go. So there's multiple types of dragons. And then there's also... I think it's in this section. Yeah, half dragon cleric and half dragon sorcerer. So there's two NPCs in here that are half dragons. And it does kind of talk about... Let's see. Um, it says, A DM who wanted to make a part dragon race available to his players could put all of the attributes into an unstealable, indestructible amulet or something similar and give it to his players at the beginning of the campaign. So basically that amulet would have all of the skills that make a character a half dragon. So you could be like half orc and also half dragon if you have the amulet on. Um, what happened? <laughs> Cinderella is a dragon but doesn't know what her powerful stepmother transformed her at a young age. That's why they call her cinders. That would be an interesting one. Um, but yeah, I, I toyed with that idea, but I thought it was a little complicated and also took away a little bit of the of the player's creative. I, get, I don't know. Anyways... <laughs> I still have to play with a lot of this, so who knows? We might change this, but um, the point is you take quests from one of these dragons, and it changes your alignment, and the quests are not necessarily, like, go burn down a village, right? Like, obviously, it has to be within the bounds of not destroying the world, right? The world has to continue on, and we have to be able to reconvene at a neutral path. So, we're going to talk game design. In in situations like these, um, in branching narratives, there is a common a common problem where if you branch for too long, the creation becomes unstable because you don't have any neutral points. So typically what you wind up with is... I wish I had... Do I have MS Paint on here? God, I hate Windows 11. Give it a second. Okay, cool. So kind of what you end up with is like you have node one and then you have node two. And then let's say we have this one and it branches here, right? So it goes there to there to there, right? If we keep doing that, so let's say this branches, right? So now we have two branches here and this branches. We have two branches here. The problem is that this can get out of hand very quickly, very quickly. So like, in, let's say I had this type of scenario we would need this to reconvene to its own like neutral state and then we would still need these to be able to reconvene to another neutral state otherwise it would very quickly get out of hand like and it, it's very like let's say it keeps branching right so now this has two branching narratives and that's just assuming that there's two this has two branching narratives and then this has two <laughs> And this is too. So as you can see, true branching narratives must always eventually reconvene to some kind of neutral point because otherwise this becomes extremely unmanageable very quickly. So we don't want to do that. We want to be able to, hmm? or do, just do what David Cage does and make all your choices shallow and meaningless. There is that. I mean, there's often sometimes in especially in like visual novels and I've done it too in my um because I have a choice script thing that I was working on I don't know why I opened it I have plenty of options that don't actually do anything they don't branch anything um another way to kind of like work alongside that here I'll show you another way to work alongside that sometimes is to do things like this so I have like these three I technically have six uh, variables, but the way that choice script works, I only need to make three of them. So I have like my sassy variable, my reckless, you know what, hang on, let's do, then we can actually look at it. So see, I have like this. So oftentimes, options that the player can make, the way that they reconvene back to this 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 common narrative, right, this this neutral point, is instead of actually branching the narrative, I instead change the stats. And so when the stats change, the narrative can continue on, and I can start referencing these variables within that na that narrative, and still keep it in a baseline, but have like brief moments where I either reference other things or I reference the stats and that's how I make it feel like a branching narrative until I get to the very end and then I can go ahead and go branch off into however many narrative options that I have you know I have accumulated so there's a couple ways that people often 
work through the whole branching narrative issue because it's it becomes so difficult to keep control of like your variables and all of the things that happen you know like let's say in this situation right somehow all you know two four six eight all eight of these narratives have to be able to come back at some point to this commonality but now this commonality has to keep track of all of the different things that happen here let's say a character dies here but is alive here and let's say a character is sick here and another character is healthy here i need to be able to keep control of those variables i need to be able to keep control of those 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 you know situations and if i keep making branching narratives like this <laughs> uh, you're going to wind up with situations where you reference something that didn't happen. Um, and I've seen that happen before in, in very vast branching narratives. And it's, it's, it's just, it's going to happen, unfortunately. There's a lot to keep track of, especially if you're a single dev. And even with multiple devs, there's, just, there's still no guarantee that everyone's going to catch it. And when you have branching narratives, there's still no guarantee that your testers are going to catch everything. There is always a chance that your testers will miss something. <laughs> Ending 862 out of 12,600 unlocked. Exactly. <laughs> um, which is another reason why Cinders is so impressive because it really does branch. But I think it uses a lot of like that variable thing that I told you about. I'll have to show you guys that game sometime. It's a very cool game. Very, very pretty. Anyways went off on a tangent <laughs> about game design um the idea here is that just we'll we'll get into like the quests I'll, I'll make another tab for for dragon quest ideas because we'll have to play with the idea for evil quests and good quests i can also write this during the day um when i'm with riley he's not always he's a very independent baby but sometimes he want he wants me and then that's obviously when i go to him but uh in the times where he doesn't want me and he's not beating up sam um I can sit down and try and write a little bit, assuming he doesn't steal my pen. But, <laughs> but, uh, ha, toddlers. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, the point is eventually, oh, and then eventually, Cinders also meets the candidates for the throne. Now, my original plot for the prince was just that she was going to meet him very early on. And they would just kind of hang out. And she wouldn't know he was the prince. And my idea behind that was just that an obvious an obvious judgment of Cinderella stories and, and most princess stories of this ilk is that they meet, they know each other for approximately two scenes, five minutes long each, and magically fall in love, get married, and have a wonderful marriage. <laughs> and, uh, no. <laughs> Let Riley come up with a quest. <laughs> The quest would involve uh, trying to catch the cat and pull its tail because you don't understand why the cat makes funny noises and that it's actually because the cat's upset. Poor Sam. I don't, tr I obviously don't try to let him pull my cat's tail. Like, I chase after them, but sometimes the toddler and the cat are a little faster than the pregnant lady, okay? So, poor Sam. And Sam. <laughs> Alright, quick tirade. Bless my cat's heart. He is patient as sin. But my God, is he stupid. I, <laughs> he has no self-preservation. He, at this point, is quite aware that Riley is very capable of pulling his tail. And also, when Riley pets him, he can go very quickly from nice, sweet, gentle pats to a very excited smack. And Sam just sits there <laughs> and doesn't move. And he knows if he goes somewhere high, Riley can't get to him. But he never does. There's a couch in the room. If he sits on the back of the couch, Riley can't reach him. He won't. He will flop down on the floor in front of Riley. <laughs> it's like Tweedledee and Tweedledum, I swear to God. <laughs> Riley, I'm, I'm going to bap the cat, Sam. I wonder what he's going to do. I'm going to bap the cat for the 99th time today, Sam. Gee willikers, I wonder what he's going to do. <laughs> Bless my cat. Like, he really is patient as sin. Like, I don't know how he hasn't, like, just 
made Riley enemy number one. I think he genuinely at least understands that Riley is a baby because he'll rub up against Riley. He's real sweet. He like, <laughs> bless him. He goes up and is just the nicest cat. And Riley will get so excited and just go whack. And I'm like, oh no. Riley's got a couple scratches right now because he was a little too rough with Sam before I could get to them. It really is like, I'll be like sitting with Riley. Riley's got a toy car in his hand. Everything is peaceful. Sam, of course, plops down two inches from me and then Riley just beeline smacks scratch. It's like, <laughs> I'm like <laughs> I know he likes Riley for whatever reason. Um, I think he treats Riley like a kitten. Um, he wants to be around Riley and he does, he is very patient. He will like fake bite Riley to warn him. Problem is, is that Riley is not a kitten and therefore thinks that Sam is playing and he thinks it's hilarious. And so he goes to do more stuff to make the cat do the funny thing. And then Sam actually bites him if, if I don't get there in time, um, which usually I follow Riley around. Sometimes Riley puts me into a false sense of security and I'm tired because I'm pregnant and so I sit down, and getting up when you're pregnant after you sit down is like trying to roll a whale into a standing position, okay? It's just a lot of grunting and flopping around, <laughs> so I'm doing my best. <laughs> Anyways, I digress. It was a long tirade. So, yeah, my original plan is probably not going to work if we're going to have candidates for the throne, right? So, assuming that that's the case, we could theoretically have them or so they're all going to be they're they're going to be possible henchmen we call them henchmen obviously they're going to have like rights to the throne or something but you know i don't know what the ball is going to be the ball <laughs> we're going to put in issues the heck is the ball going to be? I have a couple ideas. We could make the ball into a sort of royale um, or an arena. I think that kind of would be really cool to do. Um, Cinderella could pair up with whichever henchman or candidate that she likes best. Each one can have like vaguely different moralities or maybe not they'll just have different classes <laughs> and then I guess different personalities they don't they obviously shouldn't have the same personality per character um which could change the ending in, in a minute way in a like a way that would be controlled by a variable right like it wouldn't be a branching narrative it would just be branching endings so um yeah I mean we could make the ball out to be like they'll call it the ball and it's really like an arena type thing. <laughs> um, so then there could be two segments to it as well. So whichever henchman, henchman, whichever, whichever candidate wins the arena, um, then has to choose a bride. So, or like a, a whatever, you know, a partner. And so the whole idea of this could be theoretically that there's usually just the part where the heir chooses their, partner but because for whatever reason the reigning king and or queen doesn't have a child they also have the add-on of the arena and this could be just just could just be something decided throughout history of my my made-up fantasy world so we'll we'll come back to that arena plus choosing hang on choosing a bride whatever we'll just put bride because we're just doing that and then i guess like at the very end the choosing of the bride, which is the regular ball part, would just be the weighing of all of your decisions throughout the game, right? So, you know, at, at the end, at the very end, at the very end, Cinders must battle the dragon uh, whom she has not been helping. So if she's been helping the black dragon, then her final quest is going to be to kill the gold dragon, which will break my heart. <laughs> the idea is that it won't destroy the country. You are making an alliance, ultimately. If your country becomes an evil country, your country becomes an evil country. You have a black dragon. You have a lot of people who, who become thieves and stuff. And we could probably reflect that, actually, within like things like lighting, weather. I'm sure that must be controllable by code, surely. Um, but we'll have to figure out how to set it. 
uh, actually I know how to set it because you can set events I've seen that you can paint events so surely it's gonna be a little bit like RPG maker I'm sure and then the henchmen are twins that's why there's no air that I actually I played with that idea too and that, that might be another option let, let me put that twins um candidates could just be that might actually be better now that I think about it because if it's four people that's a pain <laughs> it's gonna be a pain to program if it's twins it's gonna be easier so we'll just do one man one female and they'll just be that <laughs> that's how you choose that so we'll just do twins yeah I think that's fine I think that's a better idea that's gonna be easier to program we'll just do twins can I do bold can I bold that? Excellent. And that's just going to make that easier. I, I'm going to leave the other part in for thoughts just so that I can think about it later too. I think we'll, <laughs> we were supposed to do programming tonight, but that's fine. This was fun. And I like this. I, I love this part of making stuff like world building and putting ideas out and all that fun stuff. So I might put together like um, a, a folder this weekend and just write stuff out like quests, that sort of thing. Um, obviously I have this campfire, um, by the way, campfire does not work on iPad. Don't do it. Uh, it's not optimized for iPad. So I'm going to go ahead and end this live stream here cause I'm getting kind of tired tonight. But I think honestly, I think we did really, really good cause this was very, very fun. Um, but we have a lot of cool ideas. We have a lot of options and solutions in just quest ideas, which, okay, they're not really all that much. Also, I wanted her to have allies from different races. So I wanted her to have the elves, you know, the, the dwarves, the, you know, the dragon. Um, the dragon is a big one. And obviously, whichever dragon we defeat, we should probably get some kind of treasure hoard out of it. Gold dragons don't really hoard, but... Whatever, for sake of story, we'll just say that it has a hoard. Um, just stuff that it's collected on its journey. Because um, obviously she should get something out of it. Or maybe the, the black dragon in exchange for like being allowed to just exist within this now evil country allows Cinderella to have a portion of its hoard. Whatever. Or not black dragon, red dragon. You get what I mean. Um, for some reason my brain has already connected black as being the opposite of gold. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Um... Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and just consider more of this stuff for story and for quests and just kind of put a pin on more ideas. Uh, as as we go, as I go through this and I learn what the tool set is actually capable of, that's going to change a lot, probably. We're going to probably uh, diminish some ideas and... We'll see how it goes. All the animals she looks after could be her allies. That was another thing that I was thinking of. And depending on if she's good or evil could change the animals that she has access to. So like, you know, dire wolves and all that stuff, which are not, I don't think they're evil, but whatever, <laughs> we'll, we'll pretend. Um, but you get my, you get my drift, right? Like, well, everything's going to be kind of affected by her alignment and so I think that would be a really fun way to apply the the player's decisions in the game. And it doesn't always have to be something that's like overtly like a branching narrative. It could just straight up be, why am I doing it like this? This is going to look horrible. Um, it doesn't always have to be like an obvious branching narrative. It could literally just be as simple as like an if statement if good, show this. If bad, show this. And that's it. Like, the weather is turning slightly red. Like, kind of fable-esque. You know what I mean? How you're, if you were evil, your player character would start to grow horns and kind of red skin and stuff like that. I can't do that kind of effect on the player character with a Neverwinter Nights, but I'm, I'm so sure that I can affect the weather through programming a Neverwinter. That definitely seems like something that I should be able to affect. But yes, Anyways, <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for hanging out and watching. And uh, yeah, I got to go upload Wednesday's live stream. Yeah. Awesome. Good night. Anyways, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.